Hi, my name is Nancy Lublin, and I'm the CEO and chief old person of DoSomething.org. And as I was thinking about Next Gen Charity, frankly, I really felt friggin' old. And I was thinking, am I part of Next Gen? I'm staring at a really big number in 2011, personally. And it made me think about all the things I won't be able to do anymore. See, because I have kind of a different philosophy on this whole social change thing. I don't think that you're supposed to wait to be Bono or Bill Gates. I don't think you need to have a lot of money or leather pants in order to make the world a better place. I actually think that young people are perfectly suited. In fact, they have an advantage against the rest of us in making the world a better place. So I thought I'd start by telling you a little story. So I was 23 years old when I started Dress for Success. Um, I was a miserable law student here in New York. I was having a hard time finding space to put Dress for Success in, and I just I needed to take a night off. I took a night off and I got tickets to see Ibsen's A Doll's House. And apparently I had great seats, 10th row middle, because sitting next to me was Donald Trump. And next to him was a skinny blonde socialite who should have been his wife and wasn't. And he was eating milk duds, like shoving milk duds in his mouth. And I looked at him and said, oh, do you have to own the company or are they available in the lobby? And he laughed, mouthful of milk duds, and grabbed the box from the skinny socialite next to him and handed them to me. So we struck up a conversation. He said, oh, what do you do? I didn't tell him about law school. I just said, I started a not-for-profit. I run this organization. He said, oh, do you find it interesting? And I said, yeah. And he said, really? You don't find it boring? And I said, no, it's, it's not boring helping people. So I said, what do you do? And he said, I guess no one's ever asked me that before. And I was like, well, what do you do? And he said, I guess I'm a builder. I build things. So we had this nice conversation. That night I went home and I called a friend who worked at Condé Nast and I said, you've got to get me the name of his personal assistant. She called me back and said, it's Norma Verwerderer. So I wrote it down in my file of facts because again, I'm old and this was before PDAs. So I wrote it down in my file of facts and I went to Blockbuster and I got one of those big honking boxes of milk duds. And I got in a taxi and I said, take me to Trump Tower. And I went to Trump Tower. I got to security. Now granted, this was pre-9-11 security. I got to security and I opened my file of facts and said, um, yeah, I'm here to see Norma Forderer. And they said, sure, that's in Trump suite. And they sent me up. And now I'm up there and I think, oh crap, what do I do now? So through the golden glass and mirrors, I see the woman, the skinny socialite, from the theater the night before. So I start, come here, come here. And she sees me and comes over and she's like, the woman from the theater. And I said, yes. And she said, what are you doing here? And I said, I have come to return your milk duds. And uh, she said, well, I wasn't going to eat them. And I said, yeah, well, I understand. Uh, clearly, she doesn't need anything but tofu and water. But I said, look, I understand. To be honest, I need real estate. We need space. Everything's in my apartment. And I will give Mr. Trump a box of milk duds a week for the rest of his life if you could help us out with space. And um, she said, do you want to be in Trump Tower? I said, no, we don't want to be in Trump Tower, but I know he owns real estate elsewhere. Could you help? And she said, well, he's broke. And I said, okay, I'm so sorry. My name is Nancy Lublin. And she said, my name is Norma Forder. It turns out it was the assistant. So I left. And a normal person, an almost 40-year-old person, might have left it there. But I wasn't. I was 23, and I had a dream, and I was passionate. So I went home, and I wrote a letter. Dear Mr. Trump, I'm not some freak who's stalking you. I'm actually a law student. Here's my idea. Here's our 501c3 status. Got another box of milk duds. Put it in an envelope. This time I got as far as security at the elevator and they stopped me and they said, is this something that's going to upset Marla? And I said, no, I don't think this is going to upset Marla, but the fact that he's not taking her to the theater and he's going with assistant and said might be upsetting. So that's as far as I got that time. So a couple weeks later I was doing Fox Breakfast TV. It was in like the green room. And um, in the chair next to me was this woman who I recognized. And I looked at her and I said, are you Liz Smith, the gossip columnist? She said, yeah, I am. And I said, I have this story you might be interested in. And I told her the story. And that Sunday, she ran the story, starting with Ibsen's A Doll's House and the Milk Duds and going to his office in the New York Post. And it ran in her column nationally. And she even talked about it on E! News. And so the following week, I got letters from people all over the country sending me checks, offering to help us out with space. And I took that New York Post, and I went back to Trump Tower. Because again, I was a 23-year-old with a dream. Back to Trump Tower and I said to security, please call Norma Forderer and tell her that Nancy Lublin is downstairs. And so they did, hung up and said, yes, uh, she said, come on up. 
got right in the elevator, went up to Trump Tower, and this time she saw me and she said, we saw it. He thought it was very funny, but there's nothing you know, we can do to help you. The ending of this story is really twofold. I never got a penny from Mr. Trump. I got the most beautiful rejection letter I've ever seen in my entire life. But the under ending to the story is it's something that I've thought of for years, which is I could only do that. I could only basically stalk Donald Trump as a young person. If I did that now, he'd get a restraining order against me. In fact, he's probably not going to like seeing this video. And my parents would be like, I think you've gone over the top and you're a little bit crazy. There's something awesome about being a young person and being bitten by a passionate bug to make the world a better place. I think millennials are fantastic. And I have a theory that you all can get away with a lot more than I can. So I've said this for ages and I've decided you know, for Next Gen Charity that I ought to test this hypothesis. So I've enlisted the support of a high school student, Morgan Wolf, to help me out. Um, hey, um, I have no money, but can I, can I have this for free, please? Because I'm, I'm really hungry, dude. Please, you need something. Please. Come on, man. How much is this? How much is this? I, I don't know. Huh? Oh. Go ahead, help me Oh, okay. Thanks, man. Mm. Oh, I'm probably I'm probably gonna go to a subway, the subway station, and ask somebody to pay the fare for me. Sir, um, I I don't have a metro card, and I really need to get home. Could you please swipe me in? Is that oh, okay? sure. Oh, okay. Here. Thanks, man.